when you're picking your domain, in addition to all your checklists, another thing to add in that checklist is to check web archives. There is this site, um, it's called Web Archives. You go on it, you check what your domain history was. You go to Google, you check your Google history. Um, you need to know what the past of your domain is because that really decides how your domain gets categorized on search websites. We started this company a year and a half ago. Um, and like most people, you know, the first thing you do is, is kind of pick your name. Um, except uh, when we just started the company, uh, what we really had to do was incorporate it um, for a variety of reasons. And that was our immediate pressure. And so we had two sets of lawyers to deal with, both in the US and India. And, and in that rush, we finally decided to just pick Pactora as our initial name. Uh, we thought it was kind of nice, um, Pact was trust. And so from that perspective, you know, you're being trustworthy with your um, kind of customers. And so that's how we came up with the name Pactora. So even today, while our brand name has changed a couple of times since, uh, Pactora is still our incorporated name. That's still our official name in all, in all company records as well. Um, but yeah, so once we went through that flow, um, the first thing we realized was that when we told people about Pactora, people thought it was a drug name, like a, a name of a pharma company. And so that was our first shock where we were like, okay, when we do decide our brand name, we have to be very, very careful. And that's when he started our name search the first time, right? Um, and it's your first name, first time entrepreneur, so you're being really, really careful. You want to get like the best name out there. You want it to be .com, you want it to be cheap, you want it to be easy to pronounce, um, easy to spell. Um, and at the same time, you, we were trying to go which way, you know? Some people go like, hey, it's just a brandable word, um, which doesn't mean anything. Other people go like, it's supposed to be a self-explanatory brand, right? Like, kind of like Google or Facebook. When we went the Google way, the word shouldn't mean anything, and we're just gonna brand it the way we want to. And after like a lot of hunting through a lot of different websites, we finally came up with the name Zitto. Um, and that was our first name, which was, um, again, the reasons were it's very, very short, easy to pronounce, .com was available, easy to spell, um, and we, saw, we thought it was great, you know, like um, it kind of checked all of our boxes. Um, most people liked it when we, when we floated surveys, and so that's, that's the first name we went in with. Um, Decided the name, got the domain, set up our Google account, set up all of our Slack accounts, set up AWS, everything set, you're excited, moving on, building the product. Um, cut to five months forward, we've done like a couple of conferences, our brand is out there, um, we've gotten early signups, and we finally launched our product out, right? We've gotten our first set of five or 10 customers. And as we started giving this off to our customers, and that's when you first start doing SEM, you start pushing like your brand out there, you start showing it to customers. Um, a couple of them complained about it being spam. And we just ignored it at once, because we were like, hey, how does it matter? You know, like, let's just get it whitelisted on, the, on their antivirus, and let's just move on. And then there was a third customer who was actually super nice, and, and I'm really, really thankful to him. But he actually, di he actually dissected why it was categorized as spam. And he kind of figured out that the previous domain um, was categorized as spam about 10 years ago. And none of the antiviruses had changed that particular category. And Google thought it was spam. And as a result, it was going to get blocked for all of our customers in the future as well. And he kind of like pointed it out to us and he was like, guys, I think you should change this name. And I'm super grateful to the guy. Um, it was heartbreak for us, but it was just so early on that I was like, thank God. You know, like we can still do this name change. It was still very painful. Um, we had AWS set up. We had to reset up all of our kind of cloud credentials. We had all the SaaS accounts that you had bought. You have to like literally get rid of the old domain. You don't want your new domain to be associated with the old one because then even the new one gets categorized as spam. Uh, we tried to solve it with the antivirus companies, but that was just too hard. Um, most people told us it would take like a couple of years to do and a lot of money, none of which is, is ideal for like a company that's seven months old, right? And so we finally decided, you know what? Let's just shut this. Let's just go, let's change our name. And by that time, it was quite painful. Like we had our marketing collateral set up. We had a lot of the design work done. Logo was done. Um, like I said, it was out in conferences. We had investors. We had employees. So a lot of people had already like joined on this name. Uh, but I mean, you have to do what you have to do, right? Um, and this time, we had a lot of we had an army of people. Um, so it was actually a very consensus kind of decision. Um, the next name that we picked, uh, we literally got in touch with all of the stakeholders, from employees to customers in the U.S. to friends in the U.S. Um, to investors, to friends in India, like everyone had a say um, in our next name. But guys, when you're picking your domain, in addition to all your checklists, another thing to add in that checklist is to check web archives. There is this site, um, it's called Web Archives. You go on it, you check what your domain history was, you go to Google, you check your Google history. 
Um, you need to know what the past of your domain is, because that really decides how your domain gets categorized on search websites. Uh, but yeah, moving forward, we decide on this new name. Um, it's great. We decide to go down this path of having a self-explanatory name this time, something that our customers would immediately resonate with. Uh, we've gone three months more. We've done many more conferences. We've actually gone all out now because the product is live. Um, there's nothing much to do but you know go all out in sales and marketing while you're doing product dev on the back end until one fine day we get this legal notice. And you know, like you're not used to legal notices. I've never got one before this. So your immediate instinct is to assume it's kind of spam when it comes in your domain, I mean, on your email. And you're just like, yeah, whatever, like, I'm just going to read this later. But you do end up reading it at some point, and, and lawyers are, are sharp. They're going to send you that notice in every damn address of yours. So we got one in India, we got one in the US, and it was, it was pretty clear from their end that we can't miss this. Um, and we read the notice, and basically what it said um, was that we were infringing on another domain or another brand from another SaaS company. Um, and, and, and we did have similar names. We, we shared the same suffix. So I guess um, from their perspective, that's what they were getting at. And I guess like we didn't know when we were picking our domain. We just thought it was a strong domain, a good one, and we just picked. Um, and, and, and from their perspective, it would confuse their users. Um, and it's a large company. You can't really compete. And so that was our next heartbreak where we were like, all right, this is something we have to do. We just have to change our name. And it, this time, it's not even a choice. Like, it's not like you can fight the antivirus companies and talk to them. This time, it's like, a, like, it's like legal, right? And again, you're too small. This is not what you want to focus on. You want to focus on your product. You want to focus on growth. You want to focus on sales. You don't want to focus on law and finance. Like, that's the last things you want to focus on as an early stage company. Um, and so that was our next big headache. And we were like, wow, we have to go through this whole process again. So guys, in that checklist, Go to this website, it's called TESS. That's the trademark search website. You want to ensure that your domain and your brand name is not close to any other company in your sector uh, because you could get a notice. And if you do, you're not really going to be able to fight it, even if you think it's unfair, uh, because they're just much larger. Um, and so yeah, that's when we had to do this again. And however, the bright side of this was that this, by, by this point, we really know how to change domains. Um, this was the most effective domain change I've seen. Like we did the whole thing in four days. Um, between me and my co-founder, we would just pick one of one person as the authority to pick the domain. The other person gets to vote, but has no final say. That just solves the whole who's responsible, who gets to pick. Um, in the team as well, we just carved out like a small percentage of our team who's actually thinking about the domain. And the other people were just like kept out of the process. And sometimes it's not democracy, but sometimes it's for the best because that's how you can be very, very effective at it. And parallelly, our designer started thinking of the logo, and he, we just gave him complete responsibility. We were like, you know what? We trust you. You've done three logos. You're amazing at this. I'm sure you can do a fourth. And he came up with the new logo. We found a new website. And we're finally called Zomentum, which is like a wordplay on momentum. Um, super happy with the new name. It's been great up till now. So that was our name change journey so far. Um, if you have any founder friends who you might think this video is valuable for, please feel free to share it with them. Um, add comments down here and I'm gonna be responding to them um, if you wanna know anything about our company. Again, thanks a lot for watching, thank you.